Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we got a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates, but I gotta say this video is gonna be more for the hardcore bodybuilding fans, there aren't many like super popular, let's say mainstream bodybuilders, I mean if that's even a thing, mainstream bodybuilders, but this episode is gonna be more about the guys like John Jewett, Justin Shire, Roman Fritz, the guys that aren't exactly super popular, but if you're a hardcore bodybuilding fan, I'm sure you know about them and you follow them closely. So we're gonna start with John Jewett, who, as you can see, got into some serious freaking conditioning. Like, I was not expecting this to happen so fast. You could say that this guy is currently like a leading expert on everything bodybuilding really like on prepping for a bodybuilding show and so i've been following him on his instagram on fuad's channel and i'm planning on signing up for his online course also on bodybuilding because this guy really taught me a lot he's very very educated i was following his journey during this prep i'm not sure if he's gonna do the 212 or the open i don't think he knows either he's gonna decide where his body lands in the end as far as his body weight and I was following him and it looked like he's far away from being in contest shape. And if you guys follow his YouTube channel and his Instagram, you kind of could see what was his process of thinking. And the last time I saw an update of him, he was taking a step back. He was doing a deload and he was increasing his food. And he wasn't in shape at that point and he said it himself that he was stalling, his body was stalling. And like a week or two later... He posted this, and in this freaking physique update, he pretty much looks shredded, like he's very very close to being stage ready, I mean he's almost there, like I'm not sure if this, if this layer on his glutes and his lower back is fat or is it just subcutaneous water, but whatever it is, like I'm sure he can get rid of it in like a week or two. So he was progressing, slowly, but at the end things really amped up and he really lost a lot of body fat in the last week or two. As you can see last week his weight was 223 and now it's 221. So he didn't really lose all too much fat, like only 2 pounds, that's really nothing. But for some reason he started looking much much harder, much much drier. So it could be like the introduction of certain... Uh, super supplements, it's probably that, I have no idea what he's doing as far as his protocols, but, you know, it's apparently working, and this guy just proved to us that he knows his stuff, like, he knows how to get shredded. Once again, he's 220 right now, and if he was gonna do the 212, he would have to lose another 8 pounds. Now, do I see 8 pounds of fat and water on his body? Does he really have that much to lose? Like, I don't know, I, I could see 5 max, but then he would only have like 3-4 pounds to lose to make the weight in 212, and if he needs to sacrifice a little bit of muscle, then he probably will do that, because he would be much more competitive in 212 if he can actually make the weight. You know, competing at 215 in the open, it's not really like an easy job. Most of those guys are at least 235 or something like that, majority of them are like around 250 so they would definitely be much bigger as far as his body parts i believe his main focus was on shoulder width on shoulder mass did he improve those shoulders probably yeah i would say he's wider he's bigger his shoulders are more massive but he still have same dominant body parts like his biceps his quads his legs that's where he's really dominant at and I think he, I think his waist actually looks kind of smaller. He probably grew everywhere else aside from the waist. And that's why he looks like this right now. And I gotta say his conditioning looks amazing. I don't think he was ever disconditioned at 221. So he's most likely gonna go down to 212 and qualify for the Olympia. Uh, I think he can choose whichever show he wants. He can probably win majority, almost, almost all of them. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm sure we're gonna see this guy at the Olympia stage. Uh, can he win the Olympia or something like that you know, against Sean Clarida and Keon Pearson and Angel Calderon and other guys like I'm not so sure about that but can he crack the top three I believe again I think he was third at some point yeah yeah I can see definitely I can definitely see that happening if he wants to he can get super super conditioned he'll be more probably more conditioned than everybody else on that stage and still be big enough for 212 so yeah, I'm expecting the best version of John Jewett yet. 
on this Mr. Olympia stage this year. All right, next one is Justin Shire. Now, in terms of pure bodybuilding, this guy is definitely not mainstream, definitely not super popular. What did make him kind of popular, what made me know about him and actually make a video about him is Fuad Abiyat's podcast. Now, this guy turned pro last year by winning his class at the Nationals. He did not even win the overall. Uh, that overall was won by Carlos Thomas Jr. And Justin won his pro card by winning his height class. However, Justin is a very funny guy, like he has a great sense of humor, he's very intelligent and somehow he made his way to Hostile and Fuad Abiyad. So he was a part of that podcast and in my opinion he was a great addition. He was, he reminded me a lot of Luke, like he had similar sense of humor but he wasn't that much outspoken, he was drawn back a little bit more because he probably didn't have enough confidence to be that outspoken amongst top open pros anyways long story short we're gonna analyze his physique as well but before we get to that long story short uh, justin is no longer part of what happens podcast why is that it's really hard to say fuad is saying one thing justin is saying another but from what i could gather based on uh, what justin is saying and what fuad is saying and what people are saying on the internet uh, Justin decided to stop working with Fuad. Why is that? That's really unclear. Whenever Justin was asked about this, he always replies actually, but he never really replies. He's giving us Kai Green type of answers. He keeps repeating the phrase, and I quote, I didn't like the way company operates, end of quote. And I asked Justin in the comment section, what the hell does that mean? Like, if you're gonna tell us, fans, why you stopped working with Fuad, I mean, tell us something solid, or don't give us anything at all. Like, I mean, he keeps BSing, he keeps going around in circles, and he never really says anything. We still have no idea what, why they stopped working, but there was some sort of a disagreement. And the most recent incident that was confirmed by Justin Shire was uh, at the Toronto Pro when uh, Justin and Fuad met, and Justin tried uh, shaking uh, Fuad's hand and Fuad was like, I'm not shaking your hand. He did not shake his hand. And I would totally understand this if Fuad actually told us what really happened between him and Justin. I'm assuming what happened, if that's the case, then I understand Fuad, but based on what Fuad was saying on his videos, he's like, Justin and him are still friends, they're gonna still do a podcast together, which is obviously a lie, uh, Fuad actually doesn't want to tell us the truth, these guys are no longer friends, there is bad blood between them. Now, if the situation between them is the way I believe it is, uh, it's as simple as Justin wanted to change a company because he, for example, wanted more money, because he wasn't, I don't know, appreciated enough in Hostile, because he was expected to do more than he was willing to do, you know, usual stuff, usual reasons why people uh, break contracts, then I would understand, I, I, would, I would get Fuad, because Fuad picked just enough when he was literally a nobody in bodybuilding, in bodybuilding, I mean, he had enough money, he doesn't really need a sponsor to give him money, he has a really successful company, he needed somebody to give him popularity, because that's why he's doing bodybuilding, he's not doing bodybuilding for money, Justin Shire is a great successful businessman, so he is doing bodybuilding purely from the love for it. And that's it. That, that's gotta be it. So he didn't need money from Fuad, he needed popularity because every bodybuilder needs to be, wants to be popular, wants to be appreciated, wants to be a uh, reason why somebody else gets motivated uh, to, do, to go to the gym, to compete. Like that's the biggest satisfaction that bodybuilders get from being bodybuilders, aside from money. And in Justin's case, money is not a factor. So that's the only reason. And Fuad gave him that. And now Justin walked away. I think he did also say that he was walking away from disrespect. I don't know how Fuad was disrespecting him. I would like to hear more about that. If that is the case, then fine. Then Justin has all the rights to leave. But if it isn't and Justin is lying, then <laughs> Fuad has the right not to shake his hand because he gave him a lot and Justin just left him when he picked up all the fruits from being in a podcast. Now, I don't know what is the situation, if you guys know anything, any more information, please share it with us in the comment section down below. 
But enough about all that drama, Justin is obviously preparing for a bodybuilding show. He was originally meant to do the New York, but he decided to skip on that. And I'm not sure which exactly show he's gonna do first, but soon he's gonna be ready for the stage. Uh, can he win a pro show, like his first year as a pro? I don't think so. Can he be top 3? Well, with his structure, with his waistline, with his arms, with just overall structure. Like, he has a really good structure. Even though he might not be the biggest guy of them all, he still does have the structure and it's gonna take him a long way. I can't see his back in this, in this photo right now. It was a really weak point last year. I'm sure it's better now. Is it better enough to like uh, win him a pro show? Who knows? Maybe. Maybe. Depends on the competition. What do you guys think? Are we gonna see Justin on the Olympia stage this year? Is he ready for that? Is he gonna win a pro show? Whatever you guys think about Justin, tell me down below in the comment section. Alright, next up we got an update of Roman Fritz at one week out. And he's 265 right now, which is pretty heavy. Like, Roman is not a short guy, I mean, he's not super tall either, he's like normal height. But 265 is a lot, especially for this conditioning. And I'm pretty sure this is the best condition he ever had. Like, he got super shredded and he kept, like, pretty heavy body weight. 265 had this conditioning is gonna be a really serious package. And Roman Fritz is one of those guys, similar to Ian Valier in a sense, uh, his body is like really tricky, like it gets shredded super easily, but it gets flat just as easy, so he needs to take it easy when he's cutting, like really make small adjustments to the diet, really not go super low with a deficit, and just try and maintain fullness, and just get shredded easily without really trying hard. Like, I envy him for that, I mean, I don't have those kind of genetics, I need to try pretty hard to get conditioned and to stay conditioned. Like, it's been a month since uh, the European Championships that I won, but I tried pretty hard to maintain my conditioning, because I was on a vacation, if you guys know, if you follow me, you know, and I, I tried to maintain, like, a really low body fat percent when I was over there, because I wanted to look good on the beach. And I think I kind of succeeded in that what I was doing is I was simply like eating clean. I wasn't eating a lot of junk food. I was eating in restaurants, but I was choosing stuff like, you know, different kinds of meat. Usually I was eating a lot of protein. And every morning I was doing 25 minutes of cardio next to the sea. It was beautiful. And before each cardio session, I was taking some Lava 196, which is basically a fat burner that I used to use during my prep for the show. And I would never advertise fat burners, honestly, but I like this one. Honestly, guys, like if you check out the ingredient list, you're gonna see a whole bunch of natural plant extracts. And I don't know if they're only acting as fat burners or they actually have some kind of uh, diuretic, natural diuretic effects because I was really staying super dry during this vacation. And also during my prep, I really wasn't taking any super hard fat burners. I was only taking this and I got shredded. I mean, of course, it is the diet, it is uh, the other stuff that I was taking, it is the training, it is the cardio, but I believe this helped. I might be crazy, but I don't know, man. I was taking it and I got shredded. So if you guys want to try it, uh, there is the link down below. You just use the code EVAN and you're going to get a 15% discount and I get something from it. So if you guys want to support me and this channel, you can do that by buying any of the old school lab supplements, this is an example, this is what I really like, and I keep using it every morning, still, I do my 25 minutes of cardio, and I take this before the cardio, and I think it works, I really think it works, so if you guys want to try it, there is the link down below once again, use the code EVAN, and save 15%, let me know if you like it, if you don't like it, you can just take your money back, really, can't go wrong with this one, so guys, try it out, use the code EVAN. Back to Roman Fritz at 265. So at 265, Roman Fritz looks probably more shredded than ever. Like, does he look bigger than ever? He will be bigger than ever when we see him on stage. He looks really massive from behind. Like, those th that lower body, like calves, hamstrings, glutes, all look super impressive. I think his quads also look pretty good. But he's kind of flat through the chest and the arms. And the lats from the front. So, like, from... His front upper body, I would like to see more thickness, more density. As far as his lower body, he's good. 
he's good like he's especially from the sides and from the back so he's good as far as his lower body upper body needs a little bit more work i think his back is actually pretty decent uh take a look at his back right here it, maybe it's not super massive super muscular but it has a good structure and he can pose it well and make it look even bigger than, he, than, he, than it is he has the width like structurally uh, and his glutes are super shredded he's really conditioned once again 265 he's gonna dwarf some people when he steps on that stage i believe he's doing the amro cup in spain uh, which uh, michael Crijo is also doing so that's gonna be an interesting comparison roman fritz versus michael Crijo. what do you guys think who's gonna win i mean even though i'm a big fan of roman fritz i don't think he has a chance i don't think anybody really has a chance against this monster right here and i believe Crijo actually has a real chance of cracking like the top six at the olympia i can definitely see that i mean these arms are probably the best arms in the world right now it's him and nick walker and he might be even better and as far as like the 3d effect the freak factor and that plastic look that phil heat used to have and kevin levroni like michael Crijo is definitely number one in that it's only the structure that might hold him back a little bit but the question is how much i think top six is reasonable at this point and he looks better than ever right now and at the olympia he's probably gonna be even better so yeah this is gonna be Crijo's year man he, he looks insane right now anyways guys that's gonna do it for this video if you guys enjoyed it please give it a thumbs up subscribe for more stuff like this and once again guys if you want to show me some love if you want to support this channel the link is down below check out those collapse website buy any of the supplements and just make sure to use the code even that's all guys thank you so much for watching all the best and bye bye